Welcome back to my channel guys. We got an exciting week of fishing planned ahead. Let the Florida trip begin now. Couple cane poles sitting down by the creek. Lines in the water, watching those bobbers, seeing that red sun sink. Mama's on the porch yelling, supper's hot. Y'all come and get in. We yelled five more minutes. At 16, it was 12 on three. All right, guys, we made it down to Florida. We're in Tampa, Florida right now. Um, drive was pretty easy. We drove straight through the night. We all took different shifts, and then uh, it went pretty by pretty quick. We're at Bass Pro right now, stopping to get some uh, stuff for the week. But we'll see if we can get out of here with uh, seven hundred dollars or less, right, Paul? No chance. It's never happened. I don't see it happen. Twelve hundred dollars or less? Yeah, that we can pull off. All right, we'll see. Twelve hundred dollars or less. So close. Alright, so we got out of Bass Pro with a grand total of uh, 523.77, which was close, but we also had to add license and a little extra clothes onto it. But I mean, we did good. Usually it doesn't even end up within the thousand range, so. 370 in cold. Yeah, three, okay, so we were around 800 ish. But hey, we did alright. We got the stuff we needed and uh, we got some more stuff stocked up at the house that we're going to right now. So, two hour drive there. We're going to go check out the boat and then uh, go hit the campground and get ready for tomorrow and it's going to be a big day tomorrow. Super calm out, beautiful weather. We're going to go hit, uh, we haven't decided we're going to either go hit the L tower or the T tower, but either way we're going to slam. So, hey, that's what we came down here for. Alright guys, me and Paul just pulled up at the house right now where the boat's located. Um, we just smacked some burger fee. It was shout out to them. That that was like some great food. But otherwise, the boat. Me, I've seen it before. Never personally have been on it. Paul's fished on it a couple times before. Um, I'm just excited to get out on it because I've never fished on it. I've seen it. I've never been on it personally. But we're gonna load up the stuff, give you guys a quick tour, and uh, we'll be sending it in the morning. We're waking up at 3:30 a.m. And uh, we'll be starting fishing around 4.30, so got to get out there, get that bait, and get some fish. All right, guys, out on the dock right now. You guys ready to see it? To say there I she pray. is. Lord, I the 2200 Capricorn Series. She needs a nice washing, but we're going to take good care of her. We give you guys a tour. We gotta put the rods in. We gotta get some stuff situated, but yeah. And if anybody's looking for a boat to buy, this boat right here, 33 foot Boston Whaler, an absolute beast. This is what we usually fish on. Get the bow thrusters, guys. This thing is an absolute tank. Bed right here. Storage underneath here. Two three two dual 300 Mercury's. This thing can rip, guys. And only for a small total of like, you know. It's called Sugar Mama. The total of this boat is uh, 100, going for $170,000 right now. So, I mean, it's a spendy one, but I you could easily sell this boat for over $300,000. Alright guys, so I'm gonna give you guys a quick tour real quick. Paul's on the phone with our uh, with the guy who we're buying it from, our good friend, Ben Olson. Shout out to him for letting us buy this boat off of him for a very, very friendly price. But, uh, so I'm just gonna walk you through front to back, okay? So, coming up to the front of the boat here, we got our nice Minkota trolling motor. Uh, it's got the pad that, the foot pedal that hooks on hooks onto it, and it's got the remote. Um, we got some storage right here. Come up here. Got some storage right here with our anchor. Uh, nothing too shabby there. I'm gonna get my shot out of the way here. Yeah, but it's basically just our batteries that go down and uh, 
our depth finders that can connect there and our uh, anchor there. So then come back a little further. So we're just got we just got that little lip around the edge there to show that you're up there, right here. That needs to be clean. Oh, that is not good. That smells awful. That hasn't been cleaned out in a while. Open that. Close it out. All right. Well, that smells so bad. I'm gonna finish it. I'm gonna finish this. Oh my gosh, that smells so bad. Holy, I'm gonna barf. All right. Well, that's obviously our cooler area. Right here. Some nice dry storage. Just nice, simple dry storage. We'll load that up with bait. Um, go off to the left here. This is another dry storage, I believe. With oh, that's our one of our coolers slash live wells. So that's a wet. So that's a wet storage, right there. That's a wet storage. So I'm guessing this will be the same thing. But whatever one you put drinks in, you don't put fish in the other. So, yep, another wet storage. And hose that off. So coming back, we got our batteries and our fuses all in here. You can't really see it very well. Okay, I guess you can. This just folds up right here. Nice little cushion. We're gonna have a cooler right here. Probably a Yeti, I think, that goes there. This is just to get underneath. This is some uh, underneath storage. Some more dry storage for uh, stuff like that. Coming around here, we got rod holders there. Side compartment with just your uh, fuse box basically right there. Right here, we have more side rod holders, which don't really go well for us due to the fact that our rods are all way longer than that. That will be where our like uh, 5,000s and 3,000s go, our continental reels. This seat obviously needs some work. We're probably going to just redo it completely. Uh, going on to the council here. So we have a 12 inch hummingbird that goes here. That's um, hooked under there, obviously, just like a normal one. No clue. Yeah, I have no clue what that is. Cup holders, simple, the windshield's broken. We're gonna probably get a new one of those. We are eventually gonna put a tower on this. So that will have uh, a radio up here and uh, that kind of stuff. So just like your normal tower, uh, we'll probably do a hard top tower. And uh, yeah, so we got our up down trim, trim here. Actually, no, sorry, this is not, that is for uh, our power pole. This is a trim for the motor, my bad. Um, just our normal comms, uh, some gauges here that are weather, um, Coast Guard comms, uh, our marine radio, that's what it, the word is. Um, we got our switches right here, obviously steering wheel. Um, I don't know what this is, jack plate? I don't know, I guess I don't know what that is. Um, we got some storage coming down right here. Just some nice dry storage, it's almost like a glove box. It takes the place of the glove box, which also this is a glove box here. Um, so we got the backrest here, that's in the garage where Paul's going right now. Uh, so that'll come up, we got more rod holders here, which obviously we need to get some more things like that. So there's some small stuff that needs to be redone. The speakers in the boat, we're not much for music while we fish. And if we are, we usually have Bluetooth speakers or something like that. So I don't know if we're even gonna redo those speakers or not, but uh, if we do, then moving to the back of the boat here, we got the 200 Yamaha, which I think our plan is right when we get back, we're gonna go to Frankie's Marine um, and we're gonna put a new motor on. I don't know what we're putting. I think we might put a 250 on. Um, but before we get into the storages down here, we got our uh, power pole right here. Uh, I think it is a 10 foot power pole. I believe it's a 10 foot power pole. And then we got our guide stand up here. So you can stand up here. It's perfectly safe. We got some rod holders attached to it there. Let me get out of the way for the light. Rod holder there. Um, simple stuff like that. Uh, there are some attachments that go to here that go down to here too, down to there. So it goes all the way across. And I don't know what those are exactly are for, but you can stand up here on the flats, trim up that motor all the way and use uh, one of those big, uh, it's like a canoe paddle or a kayak paddle and uh, basically poke your way across the flat and so you don't have to ruin your motor or take out your lower uh, prop. Um, so now back here for our storage, get out of the way, right here, okay so right here dry storage, some coolers light in there, just some dry storage for your uh, tackle boxes, bags, stuff like that. Um, for me, that's probably where my camera gear is going to go. Uh, this is a live well. This is our actual live well. 
So up there, when I was talking about one you'd put fish in and one you wouldn't. So when we catch fish that we would want to keep, uh, say like we catch a nice cobia. We catch a nice cobia, we're going to throw it in one of these, but we're not going to throw it in, we're not going to put like raw fish in both of them because we'll have drinks in one and food in one for our cooler and then the other cooler will be for our chum, our squid, our uh, fish we like to keep, our bait that we're going to use. So um, this is just for your live bait that you catch off of uh, the casting net or off of like Saviki rigs. So like your blue runner, your pilgers, that kind of stuff. Um, then you come over here. This is just your normal battery bilge, stuff like that. So you can definitely throw stuff in here, which we probably will. I'm sure Paul will utilize every single space because if you know Paul like I do, uh, the guy's got more tackle than he knows what to do with. Um, so one thing I didn't really mention here was this right here. So these, they do have longer spots for rods, so I guess our rods will fit. Um, it is only on one side though, that's why I forgot to mention it. So that side will be for our continental rods. This side will be for our longer spinning and bait casting rods that don't fold down at all. So tomorrow we'll go on. And then the right here, we got uh, raw water, otherwise known as fresh water. So that's our fresh water input. Um, we can connect like a host there or something like that so that we could fill the boat up with fresh water like tomorrow when we run out 55 miles out to a tower and say one of us gets bitten by a shark or a hook in our hand we need to clean it with something well we're not going to use the salt water we could use that fresh water so um it is drinkable if you fill it with drinkable water you can't just fill it with like I mean, if you fill it with lake water i guess that's technically still drinkable but i mean you gotta fill it with like hose water or city water or something like that um what else i mean i pretty much covered like everything um yeah i mean if I remember anything tomorrow, definitely I'll say it on the boat or throughout the week. I'll definitely say it. Uh, thanks guys for tuning in for part one of this Florida trip. Um, please remember to like and subscribe as you enjoy these videos and uh, be prepared for some big, big fish in part two. See you guys next time. Keep fishing.